Hey folks, Eric Scheidel here, the HVAC Service Mentor. And today we're going to explore exactly how do switches work. Hey guys, so today we are going to take a closer look at electrical switches and understand exactly how they work. Now, if you are uh, brand new to heating and air conditioning or really any other kind of service that involves electrically operated equipment, uh, you are going to be needing to learn about switches. And if you have been doing this kind of work for some time, uh, it might pay uh, some benefit to pay attention to this video anyway, even if you already know how switches work. And here's why. As I work with technicians and identify what creates trouble, uh, what creates callbacks in the field, uh, what leads to misdiagnosis, sometimes it's the fact that we forget how switches work and we forget exactly what they do or fail to recognize their importance in the circuit. And sometimes that means that parts get replaced that don't need to be replaced. We need to be looking at switches instead sometimes. So uh, stick around and uh, take a look at exactly how electrical switches work. By the way, if you like this kind of uh, video and you want to see more of this, make sure you subscribe to the channel, uh, hit the like button, and don't forget to ring the notification bell. So every time we drop a new uh, HVAC training video, you will get a notification in your inbox. And don't forget to go to www.hvacservicementor.com to find out more about our training programs and sign up on our email list. So first, a little bit of explanation. What exactly is an electrical switch? Electrical switches are one of the four major components of every single electrical circuit. And those components are power supply, number one, load, number two, and the load is the thing that does the work, such as in a lighting circuit, it's the light. In a motor circuit, it's the motor. A switch to control the load and conductors. And today we're going to be talking about the switch. Essentially, a switch is a device that allows or disallows the flow of electrical current. All switches have electrical contacts. These are physical, mechanical, uh, electrically conductive devices that physically contact one another. When the contacts are apart, like my hands are right now, there is an air space in between the electrical contacts. An air is an insulator. The presence of the air between the electrical contacts does not allow current to flow through. When the contacts join together and they physically touch, this completes a path and allows current to flow. You can kind of think of uh, electrical switches like a drawbridge, such as like this. When the drawbridge is open, electrical current cannot pass through. When the drawbridge is closed, electrical current can pass across the bridge and go on to the rest of its path. To explore a little bit more in detail on how actually electrical switches work, we're going to use a common toggle switch. Uh, this here came from one of the big box stores for 69 cents. And if you can understand how this switch works, you can understand how every switch functions. Now, one of the ways that we can observe and learn how a switch works is also similar to the way that we can test an electrical switch, and that is using a continuity meter. Here I have my uh, multimeter uh, adjusted to measure for continuity, and you can hear continuity when I touch the probes together. Like I mentioned earlier, when the uh, contacts are apart, there is no path for electricity to flow, but when they touch, there is a path for electricity to flow, and that is indicated by the sound of the tester. No flow, flow. So now I have my meter installed on the switch as if it was a pair of conductors. And this toggle switch uh, has the uh, on and off designation. But when we talk about our uh, switches in machinery, we don't usually want to say the words on and off anymore. We want to use the terms open and closed. And right now we are in an open position because we are not experiencing the tone or the sound 
of the continuity, and the multimeter is displaying OL, which means um, very high resistance. And remember, when the switch contacts are open, the electrical switch has a very high resistance, like an insulator, and will not allow current to pass through. When we change the position of the switch by moving the toggle, the contacts join together, and uh, there is continuity between the two terminals. Notice that we have a very low resistance and the sound indicating we have continuity. Switch open, switch closed. Switch open, switch closed. So now I've taken the switch apart so that you can see the internal contacts and the switching mechanism. You notice that each one of the screw terminals where the wire attaches is connected to the, term, the contact inside. We have one stationary contact here and one movable contact with an arm here. And if you look carefully, if I push down, you can see I can push the contacts apart so that they open. Here the contacts are closed, here they are open, closed, open. In the toggle switch, when you toggle the switch to the off position, it physically pushes these apart. When you toggle it to the on position, it allows them to snap together. Looking at the meter, I've turned the beeper function off, let's turn the light on, and here we are with the contacts closed, and you can see that the meter is showing very, very low resistance the contacts open, it goes to high resistance. Closed, open. Closed, open. Every switch that you'll ever encounter is going to have some version of electrical contacts that will be open or closed. Open, close. Not all switches give you an indicator whether they're open or closed. Like the toggle switch has the uh, toggle, which can show you if it's in the on or off position, which would be the on would be the closed position, off would be the open position. But a switch like this pressure switch from a gas furnace doesn't show you whether it's open or closed. Gas furnace pressure switches are supposed to be normally open, and then when a negative pressure is applied to the tube, they're supposed to move to the closed position. And we can test that with a continuity tester like this one. So as you can see right now, we are in continuity mode, and the leads are connected to the switch, and no continuity, it is open. When I produce a little suction on the hose, it should draw closed and show continuity. And there it goes. Open. And if you listen very carefully, you may even be able to hear the switch mechanism moving from open to closed. Let's turn that beeper off and see if you can hear it. I'll move it closer to the microphone. So when you're dealing with a toggle switch like this one, and you can see the position of the toggle, you can know if the switch is open or closed most of the time. The trouble comes when the switch malfunctions, when the switch fails. And switches can fail in a couple of ways. They can fail to close when they're supposed to, 
even though on this switch it may show, hey, the switch says on, it should be on, but it's not. It's not actually making contact. It could be broken. It could be. Uh, it could have uh, uh, pitting and uh, carbon on the contacts that prevent the flow of electricity. It could have multiple problems. But switches can fail, and switches that don't give you a visual indicator are a little more difficult to know if they're open or if they're closed. And that advocates for testing. Now, testing like we've done with the continuity tester can only be done when the switch is out of the circuit completely disconnected and completely de-energized, which in practical troubleshooting applications is not your first thing that you want to do. Um, it is a way to check a switch and it's a great way to understand how switches function, but in practice your switch is going to be passing voltage through or not passing voltage through. So the way to test a switch in an active live and operating circuit is to measure voltage coming in on one terminal and then measure to see whether or not it's coming out of the other terminal. And that will tell you whether the switch is open or closed in an operating system. So that is the basics on how electrical switches work, how they open to prevent the flow of electricity, how they close to allow for the flow of electricity, and a little bit about how to test them. My name is Eric Scheidel. I'm the HVAC service mentor. And like I said before, if you like this kind of video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We've got a whole bunch more coming at you regularly. And uh, hit the like button if you like this video. And don't forget about the notification bell so that as I upload new videos, you'll get a notification in your inbox. Don't forget to go to www.hvacservicementor.com for more HVAC training information. And while you're there, sign up on our website so that you'll get special tips, tricks, and training updates in your inbox. Until next time, thanks for coming.